Welcome to Happily Ever Aftermath, the podcast where we discuss relationships in movies and our relationships with them. I'm Plea Grinfield. And I'm Diana Rojek Sconner. Hello, Diana. Helena, I'm really proud of my past self for picking a light and fluffy movie this go around. I'm proud of your past self, too. Thanks. So I, it, to be honest, I was kind of like, am I going to get, am I going to watch this and be like, I'm so irritated uh, at these people and their petty problems. But um, I, there I, I didn't have that reaction. Actually, <laughs> I enjoyed these people and their petty problems um, a lot. And so I'm excited to talk about it with you. If you don't want to watch people and their really petty problems, I'm not sure a rom-com genre is the genre for you. Yeah, I I do recognize that. (laughs) Um, I did decide to have a podcast about romantic movies I was interested in as a teenager and and uh, earlier is probably not the choice for someone who doesn't want to watch people and their petty problems but we you know, say that you were clueless uh yes I was I was I uh it was a revelation I had no idea that I loved someone um that I uh never even would have considered mm. like this podcast um so clueless so what yes. uh i'm really excited to t- i'm happy to talk about this so uh when did you this is your pick yes let me get into the details of it right uh clueless 1995 um according to the description that came from the google search shallow rich and socially successful share uh alicia silverstone is at the top of her Beverly Hills High School pecking scale. Seeing herself as a matchmaker, Cher first coaxes two teachers into dating each other. Emboldened by her success, she decides to give hopelessly klutzy new student Ty, Brittany Murphy, RIP, a makeover. There's more to the description, oh but I decided... Oh my god, I totally forgot that... Per- I, I don't know, I mean, it's not like I forgot, but I just... Didn't kind of, process. I didn't process. Um, yeah, rest in peace. This, she was fantastic in this. It well, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But um, so the cast is um, Leisha Silverstone, uh, Stacy Dash, Brittany Murphy, um, Paul Rudd. Um, yeah, we we had uh, made reference to Paul Rudd before we uh, you know mm-hmm. finished the last episode. Uh, Donald Faison, um, Eliza Donovan. Brecken Meyer, Jeremy Sisto, um, the fantastic Dan Hedaya, mm-hmm. and uh, Wallace Shawn oh, and Twink so Kaplan um, as uh, Mr. Hall and Miss Geist, appropriately. And then uh, Justin Walker as Christian. Um, you know, past shout outs to like prior episodes, um, you know, Donald Faison and Brecken Meyer were in Can't Hardly Wait mm-hmm. as uh, the members of Love Burger. I almost called it Good Burger, but that's a different movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, as I mentioned beforehand, Baby Paul Rudd. Um, so Dan Hedaya, um, I can't believe that he. Is there anything that we um, that we've done with him in it? Like it shocks me that that wouldn't be true, but like I don't think so. Okay, so I grew up. Watching Cheers, loving Cheers. So he Hi. is Nick Tortelli to me, like mm-hmm. through and through. In fact, I don't imagine Dan Hedaya never being Dan Hedaya because he's just as Mel as a rich corporate lawyer. He is still Nick Tortelli as you know that. But um, I also really enjoyed him in the First Wives Club. Well, enjoyed him is the wrong word because he's he's a jackass. But that's the point. So you know, incredible actor. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I'm, are you a Blood Simple fan, Plana? Um, not, I, I, it's, no, not a huge one. I mean, which isn't, I actually like certain things of it. Uh, for me, he's just like, he's one of those people who's everywhere. So I looked it up. He was in ER a ton. He was in, I forgot that he was in Strangers with Candy. <laughs> he was fantastic. Um, I didn't know he was in Mr. Robot. I mean, I Um, forgot he was in The Usual Suspects, but that's just me. Um, I watched that movie on repeat a lot during certain parts of my life. Oh, wow. Yeah. We should do that. We should do The Usual Suspects. 
Well, not not to be heteronormative, but there's barely a, a woman who speaks in that movie. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> um. uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, I, um, so that was a delight. Uh, and then he was in Mindy Project. I forgot about that. Um, nice. And I really that. Um, but uh, yeah, so what was your whole th- uh, thing with this movie? Like, what? Uh, why did you pick it? So, um, I had formulated like a theme month in my head and I won't discuss it necessarily just in case, you know, circumstances allow me to use this theme month later on, but this movie is <laughs> off the list. So never mind. No, no reason to be that coy. Um, I, I just, I, it, it just popped into my head. I was debating whether or not it was just like, is this too big? You know? Cause like, it, it, yeah, for my age bracket, mm-hmm. um, I actually this was huge movie and even mine actually. Um, I, I, I was not a part of that, but like, yeah, <laughs> it's part of my age bracket. I mean, not me personally, because no, I, I mean, like I, I know so many people for who like mm-hmm. are, and I'll get to that later, but I think it was just, I know so many people who are like, oh, like I, who are my age, and I tell them other, they're like, oh, like movies like Clueless, and I'm like, yeah, actually, <laughs> well, but I, way- you know, Go I'll ahead. talk about where I saw it later, but yeah. Well, I want to talk about certain bridges here because I was thinking about Clueless. Does it bridge from Heather's to Clueless to Mean Girls? Yes, I think so. Okay, I because- really. Yeah. Or um, what's the singing one? Pitch Perfect. Pitch Perfect is like, oh my God. Yeah, my goddaughter and her friends, Pitch Perfect is like, she's like, I can't even believe you didn't see that. I'm wondering if Pitch per- Perfect is the, is the, it's the mean, next Mean Girls. It's, it's the, the next Mean Girls? girls? Interesting. I, okay. I don't, I have to look up the time scale, but I think like Mean Girls, yeah, I think so. Like Heather's, yeah. Okay. I was just kind of formulating in my head and the fact that you threw out pitch perfect is fascinating to me. Cool. Um, all right. Well, that being said, um, I had to really think about it after watching it again for the podcast, because I'm like, I don't remember this. And it was not, I don't remember this. Like I only isolated the parts that I really enjoy because I do, I tend to do that. And depending on the type of movie it is that, but I'm talking about like, no, I really don't remember. Oh, okay. So I had to really bring it down to, I watched this on TV, but I didn't record it off of TV. So okay. I was literally watching it whenever it was on TV uh-huh. and they edited out all the blatant drug, uh, in by thing because the references are still there and they're doing all the stuff and I'm like oh my god they're actually smoking right now I'm confused this is not right it's not oh, right because I don't remember it yeah right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay so you never like you didn't see it in the theater I'm gonna assume did not and you did not rent it I'm sure I did rent it as like a whole like hey what's this and then I watched it. But, you know, if you watched it once and then you watched it repeatedly on TV, you don't remember the renting part of it. Yeah. No, no, you're right. It's just it's just a part of it's like the background of your life. Like you can't remember. Mm-hmm. Like I was struggling. There's certain like, you know, I think I was talking about like Woody Allen movies where I'm like, I've just seen that so many times, like in so many different like I must, I know I must have seen it on Christmas day. Cause that's when it came out and that's what we did it on Christmas day. But, and for, the, yeah. for, and for the sake of, you know, this particular movie, I was at the mercy of whenever it was airing. Yeah. So you were like, you were, cause if I was 21, you were 11, uh, 12 ish. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it was, it's like 94, 95, 95. Oh, okay. So yeah, I was 22. You were 12. Mm-hmm. And I was so confused because it's like, oh, my God, it's the 25th anniversary of Clueless, like, this month. I'm like, but it says right here it came out in July. So how is it this month? It, it, and, for you know, for those of you, I'm going it, to – it'll blow my mind if people are livid, listening to this in July of 2020. And it is <laughs> – What? <laughs> What's really crazy about thinking about July is I'm like, what kind of world would they be listening in? <laughs> like – I'm going to guess one with some sort of podcast player. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> Who knows? In the future. <laughs> In the future. Yeah. 
uh, yeah, so it, I mean, I watched it. Um, I I have like certain parts of it just etched into my brain. And one of the ones I thought was pretty funny is it's not so much um, ones you might assume, but mm-hmm. it's when Cher tells Ty that it turns out Elton didn't like her and she just starts crying. She plops down and goes, it's my hips, isn't it? Oh, and my it- God. That I told I had such a re- it's funny. how I had such a reaction to that scene. Yeah, uh, it was so visceral. I was like, this is so perfect. <laughs> like, it's exactly it's it's like if there, it's a moment that describes and I mean and these are not things I'm proud of it's like you know we were having that discussion earlier where I said something and then I knew what you were gonna say because it was like what I would say to you and it made saying it to me made it seem ridiculous like mm. saying it out loud yeah in your and, head it was probably just fine in my head, it was like an appropriate, though maybe questionable reaction. But like, you're like, Polina, you're fine. Like, you're like, really? This mm-hmm. is. Um, and I think as I was, it was the thing where I said, like, I feel like I feel like I'm doing, you know, this like quarantine wrong. And you're like, um, you're staying at home. <laughs> like, that's literally what you need to do. Are you staying at home? Are you licking other people's doorknobs? Are you like. <laughs> You know, are you breathing in people's faces? No. Okay. How many times do I have to tell you, Plina, lick your own doorknob? It's a perfectly tasty doorknob. Okay, you're right. You're right. I just, you know, I like variety. Um, <laughs> so it's like that moment is one of those moments where like it, it feels so like I know exactly what she's talking about and, and it's ridiculous. Right. Right. And um, so uh, many, many years have passed since I've seen this movie. And I was curious how much of this would feel ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And and in rewatching it, would I feel ridiculous for looking back on this movie fondly? But but here's the weird thing in reading articles about this movie. Uh, it's like, blah, 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 the brilliant satire and clueless. And I'm like, the what now this was just a really fun movie and then i'm really paying attention to it about how you know this is happening and this is how they're self-aware and this is how you know they 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 pass it off brilliantly right. in the writing and i'm like oh that's probably why this doesn't feel ridiculous to watch this again right because it feels it's satire and it's well done satire mm-hmm. yeah, right and i um yeah i actually so you know i was an adult when this movie came out i mean I, i'm sorry i, I like and the reason I'm part of that is I actually uh, did not see this movie for many years, except it would be on TV. Mm. And it was one of those movies where I don't ever remember until, uh, until I realized my good friend, Robin, um, uh, who you've met, uh, she invited me uh, to a Castro theater. Um, they, what they do is they, they, um, uh, Castro Theater uh, in San Francisco d- is this old movie theater from 1912, and what they do is um, they will have they have all of these events, so they'll have like sing-alongs for different movies. But another thing they do is they have um, they'll show a movie, and then um, it'll be hosted by uh, by uh, uh, these kind of drag by drag queens, and then they'll do a uh, a uh, basically they'll do like scenes from the movie mm-hmm. after or before and they'll do like maybe a costume contest or um, a dance contest or you know it's like a whole night you know it's like a whole event and she invited me or she I think it was what it was is she found out about it and then just bought t- two tickets which mm-hmm. she does a lot which is very nice of her uh, mm-hmm. I have actually gotten a lot of like for, you know, random free tickets over the years from her, which I should actually uh, probably uh, give back. I should probably pay. I should probably pay those forward. But um, uh, anyway, so um, and I realized at that moment, and this was probably about five years ago or something. You know, something like that. Um, I was like, I've never seen this entire movie, but I remember when it came out because ever uh, you know because the difference between being 12 and 22 is like at first I would, you know, I wouldn't have gone to see it because it's like, it just looks like a teeny bopper movie. And then everyone would talk about like, it's Emma. 
um, Jane Austen's Emma, and it's a really great satire of, you know, of uh, kind of this this sort of strata of society, uh, which is you know what Emma is also. So I was, I that is how I knew it. I didn't know it as like I mean I knew it was a fun. I mean I knew it was fun, mm-hmm. but that was it's when it got to me because people would be like, no, we should totally go see it, but. I don't remember seeing it until I saw it with a bunch of drag queens. <laughs> so, uh, like all the way through. But I feel like I had seen scenes. Like I knew who it was. I knew what all the clothes were. Like you know, by the time I saw it, I realized, oh, I've seen like most of this movie. Right. Right. And my um, and I. So anyway, I lo- I really loved I. Uh, and weirdly, I'm I'm kind of off and on re list uh, on, on audible. There's actually an amazing, um, Emma Thompson, uh, does is reading Emma with, there's a couple, a bunch of other actors, um, and I don't have their names handy or, um, do some of the other voices. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I've been listening to Emma. I'm not quite all the way through. And at first I was like, I, and it's a really fit, like some of the choices they make are really great. Oh, absolutely. Um, um, it's, it's important that you brought that up because of mm-hmm. course, much like my teenage self, not realizing that this is based off a classic piece of literature. Um, mm-hmm. It wasn't until years later when I'm just like, blah, 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 you know, based on Emma. Cause it, it would always be in like the top list of just like getting literature into modern times. So, you know, younger generations could enjoy it with a, a modern voice. And I, and I read that and I just go, what? Oh, Oh, whoops. My fault. I didn't realize. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you don't need to. I mean, because I and you know, some of this is Jane. Aust- it's kind of it's classic stuff. Like, yeah, it and could I'll- be made at any. I mean, the story could be made at any time. And the thing about Jane Austen is, she's talking. It's like this is what's amazing about her is like it's so specific to mm-hmm. it's like a lot of these are so specific to their time. You know, when you read them. Mm-hmm. all of the like the stories and the interactions and the you know if you changed like you know like clueless is an excellent example if you just kind of because it's so specific mm-hmm. if you just change the specificity like modern society is comp you know society is complicated right yep. <laughs> you know class structure i mean the the details of class structure have changed Mm-hmm. But class structure still exists. Oh, uh, yeah, um, pretty much. Um, well, if if I may address the incestuous elephant in the room, uh, one yeah. of the one of the things that I was really worried about about revisiting, and one of the things that they did to make it modern is okay. So in Emma. I always had a, a disconnect of understanding when it came to Emma, and she falls in love with her brother in law. And I'm just yeah. like, I'm like, wait, so if she has a brother-in-law, that implies that she's married or that means that, um, and I was trying to do that, or that person is married to um, one of her siblings. And then like, but is it is it uncomfortable because of this, that, and the other? But no, apparently back in them times, uh, yeah. your sibling's brother-in-law was also your brother-in-law. So yeah. like the family just extended outward and I, it, it just didn't I mean, click. that kind of makes sense, right? Like my brother-in-law's, yeah, that makes sense, right? Well, I mean, you're kind of like, once you marry into a family, you're in the family. Well, that's just it though, is that she hasn't share, you know, the Emma equivalent share. Okay. No, no, I'm sorry. Emma has not married into a family. Her sister has married into a family. That's what I mean. But I mean, like once I go, I guess I was going from the brother-in-law's perspective, like once you're in the family, you're just in the family. I would have, well, I also have like kind of like private unit thing going on when it comes to my family. So I was family's very large. My family is very large, so but have I have to make choices. Like my family is like we're we're like we're like you know we're like New Zealand was 10 years ago. We're like we're like we'll like I you know um we'll take anybody. I mean we're we're very small. Like we you know I 
we're not we're not like actively looking for new members but if they happen to pop up like i mean are you are you vin dieseling it you ain't got friends you got family you know i'm think uh it's funny because that's a conversation i had today with a co-worker is basically you know the checking in and that thing and i'm like kind of but maybe just on my side i also like I am an only child of only children. I do not have a single cousin. I do not have a niece or nephew. Mm-hmm. My closest thing I've had to aunts are basically my parents' best friends. Yeah. And that is a pattern I've kind of kept up in my life. Like the people I, you know, some of the people I consider family are like, you know, Sean's best friend is like, I feel like is my brother. Mm, you know that's, that's and kind of sweet yeah and, I, and like his kids are my nieces and nephews so i've had the benefit of because i have such a large family i do make these blatant distinctions of this is my aunt this is my uncle this is my cousin this is my family and then the friends that i have chosen i mm-hmm. am in a position to say like well family is you know just the I, circumstances of how i was born whereas you know my friends are my people and so, therefore, I, I... Right, they're chosen family, like, I think was a term that, you know, especially in the, you know, oh, AIDS crisis come, came up a lot. I was uh, going to say, that's come up, and, and I, and I kind of fight that, though, because, you know, your chosen family is still trying to kind of thrust the whole family thing up against you. And I'm just thinking, yeah. like, well, but, but friends are amazing, too. This is what happens when you listen to years of Best Forevers, so... Yeah, best forevers. I feel like, <laughs> heck, oh my God, we have to have her on. First off, we have to have her on again. We have yep. to have um, uh, host of best forevers, amazing. Um, mm-hmm. We have to have her on and we have to talk about this. I really, because um, I have a slightly different, but but I'm actually curious. As somebody with enough family to be able to pick and choose mm-hmm. who is in an inner circle and who's in an outer circle, and I think I probably do this with Sean's family without realizing it. So it's interesting. I hadn't thought about it this way. Well, I'll How tell you this much. You, so, so there's like the people that you are, you know, obviously your people, right? Like mm-hmm. the people, you know, you've found along the way, but can I ask, how do you deal with the, f- make those distinctions with the family? Um, with like, you know, the people who are sort of married in your family or get subsumed into your family it's so but interesting. Maybe not related by birth. Oh, that well, it's so funny that you mention it. I mean, all due respect to like my, my brother in law's family, but I'm just like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my sister's in laws, you know. Right. Um, I just I just kind of, you know, do the relationship. But you know, we're perfectly polite, we're perfectly cordial. But even like my own extended family, like, you know, you know, the aforementioned aunts and uncles and cousins, I do have the favorites and I just recognize them as such and everyone had the appropriate titles in terms mm-hmm. of the respect, you know, like right. this is aunt blank and this is uncle blank. Yeah. And uh yeah big blank family. Uh, but, uh, it, for the most part, it's just like, eh, because, um, it's just how it was modeled. Yeah. I remember uh, my parents, um, were, my parents were very much like, there were people who, um, there's like a, um, there's like several Russian words for basically, you know, essentially on an uncle and it's perfectly normal that you would call people you may not be blood related to that Mm -hmm. and so it was a way of creating that distinction for me as a child that this is so this is a casual friend right like this is the person you meet you're polite to you make Mm -hmm. sure you know you eat everything on your plate when you if you're at their house like um you know you uh and then there's the people that um the people who got these, these designations mm-hmm. were, um, people who got this designation were, uh, people, you know, that were like this, these are the people that, um, my parents had, you know, were in, were close to and were a part of like, they considered them, you know, I guess like ride or die friends, you know? Yeah, back to uh, Fast and Furious again. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you know me, I always take it back to a car chase. Oh, absolutely. Well, all right. Anyway, back well, to sorry. all of this is to get back to the point where yeah, um, let's talk about the creepiness of it, which I was also worried about. So I'm glad that I was not alone. Well, in the beginning, you know, it was something that I kind of panicked 
when I'm like, oh crap, this is my choice. Am I, you know, what did I do? What have I, what have I done? And what's kind of interesting is that first of all, the Emma thing, that's like not a relation. So that's, that's not so bad in clueless. I really enjoy. And again, it's just once again, making uh, Mel shares dad, like, the ultimate in terms of characters in this movie. I mean, leave it to me to be a movie about teenagers. And of course I'm focusing on the father because he's oh awesome. Oh my God. Can I just, yeah, I actually, um, well, hold on to that. Yeah. Hold on to that really quick. Let me finish this for, her. so I really appreciate the fact that with Paul Rudd's character, Josh, um, it's just like, you know, Oh, he's being brought back and, and, and Mel tells Cher like, Oh yeah, he's coming over. She's like, why, why does he have to be here? You know, he, you divorced his mom like forever ago. That was barely a marriage. He's not my stepbrother. And, and it's just like, you know, you divorce the person, you don't divorce the child. Right. And so it's a basically establishing, yes, Mel has had multiple wives. You know, this is a, uh, not a blood relation, but at the same time though, so it's like Josh has a home with him because I think right. Mel recognizes that he doesn't have the best relationship with his mother and right. and his subsequent other stepfather. So it's kind of amazing that he took on that role. But at the same, it's again, it's an excellent translation of the right. relationships um, where it happens yeah. to be a little bit more modern. Actually, it's funny because um, I had a similar thing with Emma, like re listening to it. And it's like, like, I have to say my reading of it is so super casual. Like I dip in and out. Sometimes I like listen to it and I'm having trouble falling asleep. I can't or, read that way. I mean, well, because I'm listening to it. I can't listen that way. Yeah. So it's like, I, cause I'm like, oh, I've read this. Like, it's fine. And sometimes I'm like, oh shit, where was I? Like, it's just, I don't know. I'm not, it's, I'm doing it in such a slapdash way. And then all this, you know, stuff happened, kind of broke that up. But, um, but one of the things, you know, I've read it before, a couple times before and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a kind of a fun novel if you have the flu too, you know, it's one of those, like it's, uh, or enjoy it in normal, not or sick normal, times. like non sick. It's just like one of those novels, like you know, if you have in your house, you probably end up rereading. For me, I just end up like picking it up. It's just pleasure, pleasure reading. But um, I definitely noticed the dad, mm. the relationship in the book, and then I really noticed the relationship in the, I really noticed the relationship this time, like the first couple times I. I, like when even when I saw it, I just I don't know. It didn't make any an impression on me. But this time, both and I don't know if they're related, but both of them did. And it was it just actually reminded me. Even though my you know my mom my mom and I are, are also close, but uh, and my mom's a really interesting person. And like you know, she's obviously she's in the picture. <laughs> you know, like we all grew up together. Um, and I don't necessarily, and I certainly don't know if I did this as a teenager, but, um, something I thought it, tra they translated the texture of their relationship so well, like the way that she would take care of her father, mm -hmm. um, actually uh, yes. seems like an anachronism and, but yet they really figured out how to make it realistic mm -hmm. and the kind of father that he is. Um, uh, you know, I don't know. I, it's like, it, I thought, I thought they did that very well. Cause, because they basically had to capture that he was incredibly particular and had, but yet was really kind. And also the, the admiration that they have for each other, um, even though they're very different people, they let each other be themselves um, in the, in the Jane Austen book, which you actually don't see. I mean, you see that more the father daughter relationships, I think in Jane Austen novels, but like you definitely see in, in Emma, you know, um, mm. like, but you don't, see, you know, I think a lot like the relationships, uh, yeah, it's just a very, um, rich and it really did remind me a lot of like their way of being together really reminds me of the way that my dad and I are together, even though obviously I didn't take, you know, I, they kind of uh, tease each other and yet admire each other. And it's just really, it was, it was kind of, it was lovely. That part of it, it was really nice. Certain lines of their relationship really uh, kind of hit me too, where um, Cher had managed to take her report card and make it, um, you know, this is just the first offer I'm still negotiating here. Right. 
Yeah, exactly. And that's like, maybe that's it. It's like my father, that's a lot of our interaction too is like, you and, know, is sort of like advice that on that level. Plus uh, when the entire, that mini arc of her grades comes to a head, it's just like, right. you mean to tell me you talked your way from a C to an A minus just by, did you do any extra credit? Did you do this? She's like, no, you, you did this all just by, by, mm -hmm you're you know by arguing she's like yeah are you proud of me i couldn't have been more proud of you if this was actually based on your work yeah exactly it was so great i mean i like, totally butchered it but i'm just like oh yeah. my god he delivered yeah. that beautifully he did and like and then you know another time he uh you know like like she's telling about a boy and he basically he's an idiot yeah yeah like instantly like um well yeah everything she's like he's not an idiot. and he he doesn't go no, he is. He's like, okay. You know, like he really is listening in that, yep. you know, he doesn't take it as just like oh, teenage girls and boys. Like he, you know, he really like kind of interacts with it. And then at some point yep. she's like, I don't know how to argue. So in the beginning of that conversation, she he goes, she's like, I have a problem and I don't know how to argue my way out of it. And this is the part where I kind of start, you know, I was like, oh, this is me and my dad. As he goes, he goes, well, why don't you tell me about it and we'll figure out a way to argue about it, which is like exactly the conversation I have with my father. Like, it goes, well. it goes pretty well. I like it's that. Great. Yeah. And, and one of the things that is also kind of nice, um, I think it's fantastic that we are focusing more on Cher's relationship with her father than we are with. I know we haven't even mentioned like Paul Rudd, except it wasn't creepy. <laughs> I mean, I still, how about this? The creep factor for me was more along the lines of that they're teenagers. And I mentioned this before where it's just like, I don't know if I want to root for teenagers. They're just like, uh, it's kind of creepy. And here I am 37 years old and watching all this where it's just like, uh, um, what is this legal? I don't know. Don't touch yeah. her. So actually I, I was going to look this up. How, I realized I forgot how old she's supposed to be. Is she, she is a senior or a s junior? No, no, no. She's 16. Right. That's what I remember. And he's in college, so he's like 20. But then well, when I was if he's a freshman, I'm giving the benefit oh, of the doubt. Oh, he's a freshman. He's like 18 or whatever. I mean, he could be a 17-year-old freshman. Well, whatever. Does it matter? I mean, it's two, you know, six months here and there. Yeah, I mean, but when you got that legal... 21-year-old guy... It, it happens and, you know, age it's differences. Like Romeo and Juliet laws, like, I'm not going to assume. I was about to say, that's a different movie, Polina. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? Where it's like, it's yeah. like, if, if you're in certain states, if you're within a certain, which I think is California, if you're within like a few mm -hmm. years of each, like, it's not like if you're a 17 year old and your boyfriend turns 18, you're both 17 and then one day he's 18 because he's four months older than you suddenly as, he's as someone who is very careful before her now husband turned 18 when she was uh dating him at 17 and she was 18 i'm not going to comment on those laws i was i don't know for some reason i was really afraid that ryan's mom if i ever broke his heart she would come after me oh my god that's so crazy but isn't it that's the older person who would get screwed that's me oh because you're older you're a few months older than him i get it yep uh, yeah, when I was 17, I dated a 21, like my first love was 21 or 20. I can't remember. Anyway, totally worth it. It was great. <laughs> uh, the point yeah. is baby Paul Rudd. Yeah. So I have, I do not have a leg to stand on. Like nothing about it was creepy uh, to yeah. me. Well, you know, when I say creepy, I mean like, again, these these people are older than me in real life, so I can just like superimpose their olderness because when I watched it, they were older as well. So again, the idea of rooting for teenagers, it's just like, woo, you find right. that love. And, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like it's like, are they making good choices? Now you're like, are they making good choices? Yes. Oh, <laughs> and I should probably also note because you you get blatant cues from, I mean, it, it is a, a satire and it's very bubbly. So you get blatant cues from the music and the direction and the cinematography of when they were supposed to fall in love. So that's actually really, really helpful. Um, 
and I wasn't exactly looking that hard because this is a, such a on the surface type of you know love story in a in a you know a fun movie. There's no reason to look deeper than it actually is. I mean, you could have fun um, mm-hmm. to the love story part of it, not the actual other parts that are happening. But um, what I was getting at is is that it's 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 baked into just you know share going about her days you know there's a love story also happening so i i wouldn't put it blatantly in the legally blonde category where it's just about somebody doing something and then also there's a love interest right but it's 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 not as blatant but at the same time it's pretty damn close yeah because the kind of the fun part of the satire is or the friends? fun part of the whole thing maybe not the satire but the sort of the uh the kind of the 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 interesting parts are uh, are kind of what happens before the love story, like you know what you learn about Cher. You watch their like the relationship with their dad. You watch the relationship between her and her friend Dion, uh, and her relationship with Ty, like uh, and and you know the way she navigates. Um, her position in society, the way she navigates her own desires. Um, Plus is the interesting part, right? Yeah. We're getting a sense of who she is and therefore it makes it even more important when she finds somebody for herself. Yeah. Because she says, I'm not going to date. And like, I was actually one of the things I would say is um, one of the keys of Emma or what, like, and it's clearly kind of a plot device, is because it takes place mostly from Emma's perspective, mm-hmm. is, like, her whole thing is, they make it very clear she's not going to get married. Like, the, that's what in she's the decided in the novel. Like, and her, that way, you, you don't, ha- like, uh, you kind of get to focus on you know, her matchmaking and only later does it, you know, it comes in and then like, cause she's not looking for love. Mm-hmm. Like that's a very important plot device. And, and they make it really similar, which is basically, she's like, well, I don't need to get married. Like, mm-hmm. like it actually just seems like a ton of overhead. I don't actually need, you know, I have money. Yeah. I, you know, and, and I, if I were to make a home for someone else, I would lose a lot of the freedom. I get to make a home and entertain because I do it for my father, Mm -hmm. but I get to do it in a way that, you know, pleases me. Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously cares for her father, uh, and spends a lot of time caring for her father. Like she really is interested in making a home and she's like, yeah, if I do this, I'd just get another person I'd have to make a home for. And they probably like, aren't, wouldn't be as, you know, satisfying as making a home for my dad. <laughs> and, you know, or, or just, um, or at least this is my interpretation. This is not like a critical, like, this is just my thing. And, and I feel like they don't quite like her, like how they explain that away in Clueless is, um, Oh, well, I'm basically, I don't want to date high school boys. They're gross. Yeah. She's also saving herself for Luke Perry. Yeah. And, and, R.I.P. yeah. And she's like, yeah, I don't, this is, um, and it, which is really, um, and which is like a little thin because you're living in a city with a lot of colleges and universities. So, um, if you wanted a call, if you were like that type, which I mean, I have to admit, I didn't date a lot of high school guys. Um, I, I, now that I think about it kind of fell into that category. Um, you know, they'd probably be pretty easy to get. Um, Oh no, she had options. She just didn't want them. Right. But just like, it's, I mean, the idea is, is, Like, if she just was like, oh, I hate high school guys, she had options. So it didn't kind of, I think, this is my one thing where I feel like the set, they didn't quite solve that puzzle of, like, how do you translate Emma's 
reasons for not getting married, which were very particular, which were very particular to the time, they didn't translate them as well, at, like, which is my own, like, the, one of the few flaws. Um, are you sure? Because at the end, when we are at the wedding, they actually made it a point to just be like, you know, so, so Cher and Josh get together at the end. It's, it's actually, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute, but, yeah. um, it, it, it pans after, you know, they're, they're kissing and she goes in the voiceover, I think, you know, what happens next. And then the wedding happens. She's like, as if I'm only 16. And are you sure that's not her poking at that? The movie oh. poking at that? Oh yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, I guess that's an interpretation. I, I just was more thinking that one of the kind of plot devices to Emma is that she is constantly matchmaking and you need to know, you need to um, remove, uh, like in order to make sense of everything that happens or to sort of um, react the way you're supposed to react, even to her falling in love, which is supposed to be a surprise, Mm-hmm. Like the surprise part of it is key. And then also it, it, if it was that Emma is alone and, or, and share, I mean, Emma or share are alone and they're so into matchmaking. Um, and uh, you need to feel that it's not a selfish act um, that, and that they're not projecting. Like, Mm -hmm. it's not that they are lonely and want someone. It's actually that they are in a position because they are, um, they're, oh, it's like, you have to kind of, it's almost like you have to uh, have that character be freed from the, uh, you know, expectation that they're going to fall in love Mm -hmm. and that this is, and they want to fall in love. Like you have to make it very clear that they're beyond happy. Mm -hmm. Uh, with their sad, their their romantic status, that mm-hmm. it's like, it's perfect. I uh, I haven't read the book, so I'll have to take your word for it. Okay, uh, you would really enjoy it. I think. Uh, I, I, I bet think you I would, but I got some anyway. stuff going on. Okay, yeah, yeah, we all do. I'm not, you know, not a homework assignment, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. um, I think you would really enjoy it. Um, Can I talk my way to an A? in the project, even though I'm not going to read it. <laughs> yes. You get but it. Daddy. You know what? Uh, in these days, I support students who are trying to, trying to get um, all universities and colleges in the U S to uh, adopt a pass fail system. Uh, I am in. Uh, uh, so I apply that to you, but you get an A cause you know, you're my favorite. Well, I'll move into our next segment by alluding to what I was talking about earlier, where the music cues and the cinematography makes it kind of abundantly clear when Cher makes her entrance in the white dress, as she is about to go on a date with Christian, who is the mm-hmm. Frank Churchill equivalent. You see Josh just kind of staring at her, just kind of like mouth i don't know if it was literally a gape but like it was pretty a gape there was some gaping so there was so there was that she's she's wearing a white bandage dress yeah yeah uh, which is also like you know uh a a, a kind of a a a very specific fashion moment at the moment yeah It, it it screams the moment um, so that, so that was, you know, the implied Josh's moment, but I'll, I'll just take it one step further. And his moment was I think when were body con dresses at the time. Now I'm, I'm confusing bandage and body con, but yeah. Uh, so I'm saying that I'm just going to take it one step further. Not when he sees her down the stairs, but makes the active decision to say like, uh, you know what, Mel, um, I should probably go to this party. I don't like the look of that guy. And, and what's great is that Mel says, you know, if you, uh, if you think you should go, you should go. And then after Josh leaves, he has this, Mel has a smirk on his face because he knows Mm -hmm, what's mm -hmm. happening. I love that. He already knows what's happening. Right. Right. And he's kind of liking it. Like he's trying to get the, then you notice that he's trying to get them in the same room. I didn't, but that's an interesting observation. Um, so in turn, I think that that's, you know, the movie is trying to tell me this and I believe it. And then on Cher's side, mm-hmm. it, apparently it was an homage to the movie Gigi, where mm-hmm. she is actually, you're hearing her inner monologue and she comes to the realization. You are actually watching her in real time come to the realization that she is in love with Josh as she talks about all of his qualities 
and and how that there's this possibility that you know she comes to the conclusion that because ty has a crush on josh therefore josh must also be in love with her so therefore Ooh. she you know that just kind of sets off her her radar um and so there she's like wait no it should be me and then a fountain goes off with lights in the background yeah so, i know like, that was so great like yeah the the fountain kind of i mean it was there and then it just gets like bigger yeah. which is what happens in gg yes the, yeah the second she realizes that it's just like mm-hmm. ah, and, and i'm just like okay movie i believe you this is the moment i'm not gonna fight you um yeah and it was it was kind of interesting about their because i i had a hard time and i kind of i i'm actually with you like i kind of have to go with what the movie does um but instantly their relationship is so um familiar and jovial and actually like i think that the seeds sort of get planted when he starts having to you know at some point he starts having to drive around because she doesn't have a a license she just has a permit and she like is a terrible driver she never really quite learns how and it's just like oh i'm just trying and i get by you know my charm which is like kind of hard when you're driving physics and is involved physics is involved and you know deadly like she's driving a jeep you know deadly i loved and i think like just having that time together sort of does strengthen it but i don't think he realizes that he's in love with her i think you're right like you know you just have all these moments where they kind of both build up and i think it's like that you know i think that moment is like oh actually my feelings are you know are real and Mm -hmm. not just like even though you see her and it's like just a you know she's just being sort of uh she's being uh you know obviously uh, like looking incredibly sexy she's wearing a super short super tight white dress and then oh and her, and then and then he turn he goes he goes are you gonna to the her father and says are you going to let her like leave the house like this and and you know and i think it's that moment too of like i kind of it's so strong that i have to like do something about it Mm-hmm. My feelings, uh, like his feelings are so strong. That's what he says to himself in my head. Um, but I, I also love that she goes upstairs and goes, fine. Like she doesn't argue with her father at like for a second. She kind well, of no, does a she, little pouting. Well, no, she, she actually goes, duh, I'm getting a jacket. Right. And she goes upstairs and she puts on a see-through safari like like it is a long jacket it does cover the dress but it's completely it's uh it's it's like uh, it's like a chiffon or something it's like not lace but like it's chiffon yeah it's like see-through basically it's it's our trans it's translucent you know it uh like she doesn't put on, I was going to say it's not, it's not transparent. Like it's not, it's not like clear vinyl, but it's like a chiffon jacket, uh, that, you know, doesn't actually cover anything, um, uh, which is great. And her father's like, fine, you know, and it's just like a really good example of their relationship. Um, because she's like, yeah, I'll do the thing you want me to do, but I'm still going to do my own thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yeah. I, I um, so we're yeah. right on the same page with the movie. I think we're on the same page with that. Yeah. Well, sadly, what's also on this page is um, I will say that the the kiss at the end. I mean, it's really cute that they end the movie with the wedding of the two teachers, which was right. also a really oh, sweet love oh, story as yeah, well. Yeah, that was another really sweet one yeah. that I really enjoyed more. But, but I will place. say that even in my younger years, ending the movie with the kiss between Sharon and Josh was actually just kind of creepy to me because it was just like them smushing faces together over and over again. And, and then when it kind of ended with a hug, I'm like, okay, well that's a little bit better, but there's something about watching them just like kissy, 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 kissy. I'm like, I can't, no, I, I don't, I'm, 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 this is gross. I don't like it. Hmm. Yeah. And, and it, it's not like the, you know, the relationship or, you know, the, the step sibling thing at all. It was just like, I don't like them kissing. I just like them teasing each other. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed that kissing. I mean, it was kind of long. Yeah. But it was like. Definitely long. I don't know. It was sort of sweet. Like, 
I don't know. I didn't, uh, yeah, I guess I didn't feel that way, but I think you tend to feel that way more. Like you didn't like the, like the scene, um, in, um, uh, uh, Jerry Maguire, you know, where like the, um, the you decided to go. Porch, you decided to go down on her on the porch. Yeah, that was gross. Yeah. See, I thought that was like a super sweet. Okay. Kind of captured a real moment. Okay. Um, go inside. Okay. I'm sorry. Just go inside. <laughs> but if they it's, go inside, then it it's like it's it's no longer their world. Like, you know, it's like the sisters there. It's the she was out for the and night. Also, like, uh, no, she was babysitting. I thought the babysitter was babysitting the nanny. Well, still, then you have to pay the nanny and you have to like, so do whatever, like, gonna have this I don't know. You know, there's, there's like a thing. And also I just found it a very sweet moment of a first sort of encounter, but I, I like that movie a bit. I think it's funny that you say, you know, they're in their own little world. Like, no, it's a porch and anyone can see them. Everyone else is in their world except the people who are inside. Let's like, I mean, they would have to be like staring out the window, um, you know, sitting there staring out the window, trying, you know, there's what they live in, like a suburban home. There's two people who can see that porch and they're both and, watching. It's called and Mrs. they're both just Mrs. sitting Kravitz. there. I'm like, it's not rear window. It's like, you know. No, it's bewitched. Abner, Abner. <laughs> uh, I, I guess, yeah, I don't know. I'm a, uh, I'm more of a, uh, you know, I don't know. You're uh, making out on the porch kind of girl? Well, not, you know. I just, I don't know, maybe, yeah, I'm like, just don't really think about those things. And I also like, I like when, I, you know, when it's gross when it, I kind of like seeing that, to be honest. Not like I want to watch it, but like when I see people like kiss in public, I like it. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't really feel that way. Actually, like, because I actually, like, you really, I don't know. I really bought their chemistry, their chemistry unwrapped, like, unwrapped in a way. Like, the first thing you see is just how comfortable they are with each other and how much they can tease each other and how, like, um, you know, they, they don't really irrit- they irritate each other, but not, you know, it's almost like not to the good degree that they think they each, each sort of thinks they do. And when they're in together, they, they find a groove, but you, if you didn't know what happened in this movie, you would never assume that they would end up together. Right. Like when you first see them kind of interacting. And so I feel like their chemistry unfolded very naturally because it also was incorporated well with uh, Cher's maturing over the course of the movie as well. Right, exactly. And he sort of is a part of that without sort of being, um, he's a part of that without being. Um, he's, he's the catalyst. Yeah, yeah. Without like kind of ex- like telling her how she should, like he wasn't, he wasn't too, he wasn't like, Okay, I'm going to make you a better person. No, he called her out on her own behavior. She's just like, what are you talking about? I care about other people. He's like, yeah, unless it serves your own purposes. So, right. yeah, she decided to turn in, which, you know, within herself. So that's, you know, helpful. Right. And, and I think, like, her self-awareness, um, this is the satire bit, but the self-aware, her self-awareness is, you know, on display. So you're not like, oh, God, she's really changed. It's more like, it's like, oh, I see her having self-awareness and now it's just directed in a way that is nice, you know? Anyway. Nice. Uh, uh, did oh. you want to use that observation to set off the conversation of what you think happens next? Sure. Do you want to go first or should I? Well, oh, okay. No, <laughs> I, I, well, no, I just said, did you want to use that as you? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, um, so I really, really like them together, but I don't think they're going to last. Um, stop reading my notes. (laughs) Um, I just, you know, they are, I, I think actually most of it is that they live, I mean, they're both 
I guess, okay, he's, he is going to college in the same place. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just feel like they don't have enough, um, like the worlds overlapping, um, don't, uh, they don't just don't, they, I just don't think they're going to mesh enough. Like I, I actually think they're going to be together for this time. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe for a little while into the school year, um, but I actually think that, you know, um, I think he's going to, uh, I think he's going to fall in love with, or he's going to, he's going to start having feelings for somebody else that may be, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, of change that goes, you know, when you're 16 to 17 to 18 to 19 to 20, um, and I, you know, I think what may happen is that they will like decide, you know, maybe they're together for a little while and then they decide like, Hey, you know, if you meet somebody in college, you know, if like something happens, you know, with a school, like, you know, uh, as long as it's not serious. And I think that for him, it will become like, I think they will have an agreement like that. Um, because share is nothing if not practical. And I think that, uh, uh, she are emotionally practical. Okay. And thank I you. She like, drives in platforms. She's not practical. I mean, to be honest, so do I. Um, but, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, they're not, they're not as high as hers, but, um, you know, Mythbusters did an entire episode and they proved that you could drive in heels just as easily. Um, but I, uh, yeah, except I just realized how sad that was. Mine are like dance goes, <laughs> um, hers are like actual heels. Um, so, uh, mine are like dance go, you know, uh, orthopedic heels. Um, so I think that she, uh, I think that basically he ends up starting to have feelings for somebody else and he'll probably go through some like soul searching about that. But then ultimately I think she'll like, I think for her, she'll, she'll feel like, you know, this was a good experience. Um, I learned a lot about how to like, you know, love somebody, but you know, it's run its course. And so I actually think for him, it'll be maybe more agonizing, um, because, uh, but I think for her, she'll, you know, I'm not saying she's not going to feel sad, but I actually think she's going to be okay. Uh, she's a force of nature and I think like she's going to use that force of natureness to go do something else. Wow. I think she'll continue like that, you know, look like romance and love is a fantastic sauce, but not the main course. Yeah. Um, Maybe a side dish rather than a sauce. Well, I agree with you that I don't think that this will last. This will not go the distance. Um, what I was seeing, especially in the final scene where they were at the wedding, I mean, one of the things I noticed is that he's at the wedding and it's her friends there and he's mm -hmm. talking to them and he's like hanging out with them. And that's really nice, but it's always mm -hmm. just like, sh it's her as the center of, and right. that can't last. And no. so eventually he will go back to college. And I think what's going to happen is that, you know, she's going to finish up high school and mm -hmm. they're going to stay together through that period of time. But, you know, there you what you're saying about 18 to nine, you know, 16 to 20. Mm -hmm. You're totally right. But there's a lot happening, you know, in the college years of just like when yeah, you're starting off. Saying, yeah. yeah. Well, it's no, like like, every year is huge. And yeah, college is its own sort of mm -hmm. universe and you yeah. have to. You kind of have yeah. to throw yourself in there. Well, he's he's a freshman and he's thinking about being a lawyer, you know, right. and and that's going to throw a you know huge wrench into all that as well. But you know what I really he's not going to have a lot of time for her either. 
No, no, no. As a freshman, it's a little bit easier because you have all your general ed, but you have to okay. do all the other pieces. Um, mm -hmm. What I see happening is, you know, he's going to go back. You know, he did have like a girlfriend, you know, throughout the course of this. You know, he has his own people. You know, he's he's um, a little bit more focused on, you know, current events and, and mm -hmm. various things. And of course, they were throwing that all back in the face of the girl who was like having an argument with him about, you know, certain things as they were picking up Cher. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, highlighting, you know, the difference between Cher and then, you know, the girls he's actually right. interested in. So it's 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 the reality of the situation that even though they have this fondness for one another and this bonding, you know, mm -hmm. through what they have and what they share, um, no pun intended there. Uh, mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah, you know, thank you. Uh, I think that ultimately it will it, it's going to it's going to like be a, a mutual situation where she's going to go off to college. And I think even though she really wants to be close, she's going to have to pick something that will take her away. Even if it's like, I'm not saying she's going to like fly off to New York because she doesn't strike me as the let's go to New York kind of person. But I do see her trying to do some version of adventures, you know, maybe internationally, mm. but for a short period of time. And she, you know she'll mm -hmm. not want to be tied down he's gonna feel like it's you know it's it's gonna come mutually um, yeah it's gonna come mutually probably when she starts college and when he starts really seriously looking at law school mm -hmm. assuming he oh, does so you assume it. they're together for a few years i'm assuming that they're gonna be together long enough for her to graduate high school uh, because it's a lot easy to maintain, you know, similar surroundings when she's in high school and she's not going anywhere and he could just come back and visit cause he's pretty close. But when she is open to either, you know, mm, starting a career or starting right. college, then it's just like the world is wide open now, especially right. for somebody who lives where she does. And, you know, and has the um, resources and cash. And I think it's going to end amicably. There'll be some like weirdness in the beginning, but no more than when you're dating your step sibling. You know, I would imagine yeah. <laughs> they, they probably they probably pivot pretty well. That's the other thing. Like, I just realized I didn't really think about this. So ostensibly, mm. they are dating. Yes. While being under the same roof. You think Mel's not going to have some sort of like... Uh, even if he does approve of Josh as a person, right. you know, for his daughter, you think he's not going to say like, all right, you're, you're moving to the guest house or something to that effect. Yeah, I think so. But that's still like pretty close, you know, like, sure. Sure. I don't know. I mean, I snuck out of my, sorry, dad. Um, I'm sure you know this though. Uh, I snuck out of my house a lot when I was, you know, to see my boyfriend when I was in high school. And I assume, you know, if they're like, if she's in the pool house, you know, it's pretty easy. So that's another thing. Like, I mean, and uh, you know, obviously we don't have to solve this problem. Um, but I Mel just does. realized it, but Mel does. And I just realized it just didn't even occur to me. Like, yeah, they're like, it's um, fine. Mel's got a 45 and a shovel. Um, <laughs> but it's his son. Like, if it was somebody else, it'd be one thing, but he can't exactly, you know. But yeah, it's anyway, we don't have to solve these problems. It's a lighthearted, it's some lighthearted fare. <laughs> oh, wow. Anything else you wanted to add to their future? I don't think so. Okay. Well, there it is. That's clueless. That is clueless. Yeah. I are you uh, uh, that you did you enjoy it as much as you remembered enjoying it? I remember enjoying it then. I think with a better understanding of what's happening, I enjoyed it more now. Probably nice. won't revisit it again for a while, but that's not to say I didn't have a damn good time. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was pretty cool. Time. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, one of the things I think is is kind of important, we were talking earlier about, you know, how we're kind of coping as we're dealing mm -hmm. through this. So um, I have actually been harnessing my stash of Frankie and Murr. Mm -hmm. And uh, wonderful sponsor. Thank you very much to Frankie and Murr. And one of my previous purchases of the Thrilla of Vanilla, I have mentioned before, is just you know, such that's happy your scent. Like that's your happy it, place. It's my happiness. So I've just decided that, you know what? Um, I'm going for it. And I have given myself a, a three spritz in the hallway happiness 
Mm. And it's just like it's there, and I absorb it, and it's just like, oh, this is so nice right now. And it's it, is, mm-hmm. it becomes like my happy area, and it's just so right. nice. And so that's that's how I'm getting through it, and I just think it's kind of amazing that yeah, I can keep it's on really, to this. It's really amazing the power of sound, especially because we are so, you know, I I'm not much of a homebody, um, but obviously I've had to be. And, um, yeah, it's nice to be able to, like, if you're in the same, you know, in my case, the same three rooms, um, that only one of which really has a door, um, <laughs> like, the it's bathroom? nice to be able to, sh- uh, well, I guess the bathroom also has a door, four rooms, if we count the bathroom, Woo! but, um, um, it's nice to be able to kind of, sh- you know, it's, it's nice to be able to have a, a little thing that's very fast and, uh, can kind of shift your mood. Mm-hmm. and shift your your um shift sort of um your day parts of your day yeah and what's kind of great is that i have found my version of it and uh mm-hmm. you sh- i wholeheartedly recommend that everyone go find that scent that works for them and uh, you can do that if you go to frankie and i would be remiss if i didn't say that if you use the promo code happily one do the thing oh H a p p i l y one. Sorry, <laughs> I missed my cue. <laughs> so, if you use the promo code uh, happily one, you'll save twenty percent off your f- entire order. And orders over forty dollars get free shipping uh, in the United States. Mm-hmm. Ah, so you do that. You support the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, I think that there are so many amazing scents for you to work with. Um, yeah, it took me. A while, but I found it. Yeah, and it's fun. It's like it's really fun, and the stuff is well priced, so that like you don't, you know, you don't have to worry about it. And the other thing is, you're supporting like a small business that, um, you know, you're supporting a small business in in you know, well, in my you know my city um, <laughs> uh, and our uh, Bay Area that uh, you know we want to stick around. So um, all. All good reasons. <laughs> All right. So um, we want to know what you have to think about Clueless. So if you want to join the conversation with us, we are on Facebook at Happily Ever Aftermath. And we are on Twitter and Instagram at Hemecast. H-E-A-M-C-A-S-T. And you can also catch us um, with your longer thoughts in email, uh, contact at Hemecast.com. Um, big shout out to the Lady Pod Squad. Um, Huge one. Earlier mentioned uh, Best Forevers, a podcast for kindred spirits. Uh, excuse me. A podcast for kindred spirits, um, mm-hmm. you know, hosted by Elisa Lucas. And yes. you can check out her podcast. Um, she has a, a different podcast, a true crime podcast called Fatalities. I did not know this. Really? It's, yeah, <gasps> it's it's also T-E-A-S. So it's like, you know, she's a big tea drinker and she really enjoys the uh, the true crime. So. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm a fan, too. This is well, great. I well, had no idea. I'm going to well, have to get on that. And uh, tell you what, we'll link it to the show notes considering Polina's reaction right now. Perfect. Please yeah. do, because then I don't have to look it up myself. I <laughs> I somehow have tried to figure out how to how to have Diana do things for me, because she's, she's much more, uh, she's just better at them. She's better at adulting than I am. Oh, well, thank you for that compliment. Well, you're very welcome, but you know, it's... Uh, not like I, I'm I'm that bad at adulting that it's not that good. It's, a, it's a, not a high compliment, but you are very good at it. I've been, I've been uh, trying to cut down my adulting to-do list, so uh, we'll work it out, Polina. Okay, good, good. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try to start it, finally start picking up some adulting slack. There we go. Okay, cool. Well, um, I hope to see you guys next time. Yeah, thanks for when joining we us. we do that, thank you so much. And uh, stay safe and stay sane, everyone. Next time, we'll be doing 1955's movie musical, Guys and Dolls.